Afternoon peeps and welcome to Technique Tuesday. This one's going to be a short one and it is pre-recorded because I was working on something yesterday and I thought I wonder if people realize how easy this is. And until somebody shows you the first time you wouldn't think of it but really once they show you it just pops up. I learned how to do this a long time ago and I don't do it often enough but I'm going to make an easel card for you. So this is the card I was working on. And I like it the way it is. I, I usually have a lot more die cuts and embellishments and stuff. But when I got this far, I was like, I absolutely love this paper and I want the paper to be the star of the show. So I made this. And you might notice that there is no sentiment on it. But that's okay. Because one, not every card needs a sentiment. You can write on the inside. And two, when it's fully opened in its glory, there is a sentiment. <laughs> So yes, that is an easel card. To give you an idea of what it means, boom, it pops up like an easel. Now, it has big wow. And I think people figured out when you go to first go to open it, um, it, it sort of naturally wants to bend. So I think people figured that out pretty quick. You could put a little note that says, I stand up, that they could pop off, but I think it works. But doesn't that have some like, wow, and it will sit nice on your desk? Now, I haven't got as far this year, but these little mini calendars, very easy to adapt these into one of these cards too, right? I have lots from last year, I just haven't made this year's yet. So there we go, loving this card. This card, I, I made this card simply because I need to send some squares to some demonstrators and I can't just put them in an envelope, I had to put them in something. So there you go. So here's what I'm going to show you. Here's the card base. As you can see, my production line is going. Here's the card base, very standard card base. And it is really this simple. <clears throat> Take your card base. You can, you can get more elaborate. I did do one of these once years ago for my mom for her birthday. And it had three mountains on it, like three little easels on it. So I had a a cup of tea, a pot of tea, and I think some flowers. So that, it, and it was, you know, different heights. So it looked like the tea was kind of flowing. Anyways, we're going to keep the simple one. So we're going to fold this over and we're just going to crease it. And there you go. We're done. <laughs> okay, there's the basic mechanism though that you need. Oops, I'm off screen. There's basically what you need, right? So here's what you need to know whatever you're doing, on the inside, you know at least some of it is always going to be part of the. Again, I keep going off. Sorry. Part of it always is always going to be part of the main visual you're going for. Um, I like to stamp the inside of cards, but usually when you open a card, you open it up, you look at it. Oh, okay, great. So you know you're always going to see at least some of it. So make sure that when you're designing your card, you work that into the plan. But the other thing you need is something to hold the easel. Let's see if I get the right angle. So you'll notice this, this label, the Merry Christmas label, is on dimensions. Now you can hold an easel card open with one little embellishment um, stuck on. Uh, oh, here we go. Perfect. That would be on the side of my desk because I don't put things away. Okay, so this tiny little bee, which has nothing to do with Christmas, whoops, gingerbread snowflakes. But this tiny little bee, you could put on. And you could stick it here and it would be enough to hold it. Now, if you just stick it in like one corner or something, your card, well, the tendency of your card is going to be that it'll be a slightly crooked, not the end of the world. If you want the most secure thing you can do and the straightest thing you can do is have something bigger here. <clears throat> now, in this case, I picked the size of this because I love this sentiment with this font. Absolutely love it. Um, and it just happens to be really long. So yes, there's three dimensionals under here. It's nice and secure. It holds quite well. Um, this was this the, these uh, pieces. Which I will explain in a minute why they're the size they are. Are part of the Memories and More series, and uh, I like the stripes. That's very nice. But this little garland one, I loved so much. I couldn't I couldn't trim it or anything. Unfortunately, there is six of each, and I needed eight cards, so I ended up making four and four. Um, so yeah, this one has a, an even bigger strip in the middle just because I wanted to put a slightly different green. But yeah, absolutely love this font. This font, which is part of something. 
this fall, which is part of the Christmas to Remember set. And I really, really, really like this. Love and joy come to you and may it last the whole year through. There's some great, great sound. May this Christmas be a, may this be a Christmas to remember and cherish. I mean, there's some awesome ones. There's also a really good French one in there, if you notice. Friends like you make the season special. Anyways, that is our, uh, that's where I've got them from. So they just, yes, they happen to be big. They don't, that's not absolutely what you have to do. Sorry, I have the camera off today and nothing is where it's supposed to be. Um, but anyway, so, but it is important that it's popped up. You need some kind of a little lip of some sort or some thing there, some, something to hold this from just sliding shut again. The other thing that is important to remember is if you want this to go in the envelope, which, well, let's face it, most people are going to hand a card to somebody in an envelope or mail it. You do. And other than my little snowflake, which pops up there and gets in my way, here we go. This fits in the envelope, no problem. Because whatever you make on this card, you just have to make sure it fits within the confines of the front of the envelope. Now, the envelope has like a little bit of give. So if you if you had something that stuck out by, you know, an eighth of an inch, you could probably get away with it. But plan your design. And I think you still want to plan the front of the card to look okay flat, because that's the first thing they're going to see. The wow is when they do this. But yes, whatever, however you stand it up or do whatever else you do with it, make sure that you don't go outside the confines of this. Now, the reason that my square, oh, here, I'm going to pop this down real quick. Um, here's another tip for you. Our snails, super strong adhesive. Uh, and this one's kind of nice though, because it does have, as strong as it is, it gives you a little give at the beginning. And you kind of just have to give it a little, like, when you're doing it, you just kind of have to bend your, like, bend back on yourself to give it a nice good break. But if you're quick and you don't do that, sometimes you can pull it a little, give it a stretch, and it kind of bounces back a bit so it's not right at the end. Silicone mats, which I always have, give them a little start. It gets a good grip on that thing and gives it a nice little start. So. Okay, so I'm going to put this in, and there, and there's no, like I said, you just, you know, you're going to see part of it, so just plan accordingly. I'm just trying to line mine up. I have it slightly angled here on the camera. There we go. Now, there's still room to write, and the root, and the part you're going to write, so if you want to write something super messy, uh, is not going to be seen. It is underneath the little mountain, um, and then whatever's going to hold it up. Now, like I said, it's, now that I've got everything all wonky, I loved these cards. So the memories and more cards, they come in two sizes. There's a four by six card base and a three by four card base. No, three and a quarter by four and a quarter, I guess it would be. So these are little cards that go on top of them. And if I had any idea what I did with, with the rest of them, there we go. Just a second. So they come in a card base like this. There's big ones and they, they come out. Now these four by sixes, um, the card base is just a little bit bigger, uh, which is good if you want to add photos, right? Four by six is a standard for photos. And then smaller ones, and they come with little labels and stuff. They're meant for memory and more so like memory keeping, scrapbooking, that kind of thing. Um, but all the cards are sort of do double duty. And they also just make great little bits and pieces for um, the card. Look at these things though. Cookie racks. Oops, I'll move that out of the way. Are these not the cutest things in the world? And somewhere in here, there's, there's a couple of sheets of stickers. And one of them, this has absolutely nothing to do with the usual card, I guess, you know, squirrel. Um, one of them has little spatulas and little oven mitts. I mean, come on. Anyways, the memory more cards, like I said, in, intended for scrapbooking, but you can do so much with them to make cards quickly. Um, I was just really looking for the right color base. That's what I was looking for. Anyways, there's three by four. I didn't want to cut it down because I didn't want to cut off any of this, I don't know, party. So you'll notice though that even matted, it fit, it just fits on here. Uh, the other one that's on the other one is this one. I, you could just stick the, these are pretty good, like sturdy cardstock. The, the thing is they're two-sided, right? So if I knew, that I put this on like this. Because what I would have really liked to do is put it on like this and have like a little bit of a lift to it. So there was like some border around it. But 
up again. This is what the back would have looked like. So that's, you know, part of the reason that I put that on. Now, if I do this though, I'll see this one, I might get away with it. So if, if I decided I wanted to like pop this thing up too far though, when I, so I have this like nice big high card, when I close it, it's going to stick over too much and it's never going to fit in the envelope. So I left them the size they did because I didn't want to trim them, but I put the thing on so it just exactly fits. Now the key to this, when you're doing it, is make sure, and I like to live on the, I like to live on the edge. So I'm going to put the adhesive right on the piece. You could put it right on here so you know not to go too high, but make sure that your adhesive only goes as high as the part of the card that you're sticking to. Otherwise, the first time you close your card to put it in an envelope, you're going to glue it shut. <laughs> well, you're not going to glue it shut. You're going to glue this down, and then <clears throat> your easel will no longer be an easel. It will just be a card with a crease in the middle. So my adhesive was only on the bottom half of this card. So there's none here. Now, I guess you could add, embellish the back. You could write on the back. You could do all sorts of things there. So perfectly lined up, and it fits in. Then I just added my decorations. In this case, I didn't pop the snowflake out. Here, let's have a product on parade while we do Technique Tuesday. So these are iridescent snowflakes. They come in sheets and they are die cut. So they're a little, um, they're a little more delicate. <laughs> I haven't ripped any yet, but I have ripped previous things that were delicate. So I'm trying to be careful. So they're just, yeah, they're die cut and they're just like slightly stuck to the edge of there. There we go. And then they have a nice little shiver to them and they are awesome. Now you could cut these in half, but I want, I want at least two of these. So if I wanted a half a snowflake, I could cut down the middle and I'd only have three, but I want as many of these little points as I can get. So I, I stuck this down. And, and again, make sure, I'm gonna find the end of my tape, make sure that you are only putting adhesive or adhering these down to either this card, right, this big piece, or the bottom half of this. You don't want to put any adhesive on this piece. So I'm just putting it like this, and because I know I'm covering it up, I love tear and tape. I'm just sticking a little piece of tear and tape there. But you notice it's only stuck on this piece. Now I'm going to, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm going to pop some dimensionals because I love dimensionals. I know people who prefer their cards to be flat. I am not one of them. <laughs> Insert flat joke here. <laughs> uh, I've never been flat, so I don't like flat parts. Okay, so I'm going to pop these guys in. And I know that these are also, I think I have the back of a dimensional stuff somewhere. Um, I know that these are also, all the dimensionals are hitting this card, so I'm not worried about it. But again, make sure that you're, <clears throat> excuse me. You're sticking them just to the part that's not going to move. Now, you can do this. <clears throat> excuse me. I'm suddenly at puberty. <clears throat> um, you can almost hold that card on that piece of DSP. That's why I said, you, I mean, even just like a little embellishment will do it. But obviously, it's not going to stay that way. But if you're lucky, you can sometimes get it to stay there long enough to put your piece on. Okay, so like I said, I put dimensionals on the back of this. In this case, there's three of them. Um, you could put four, you could put a strip of dimensional, whatever. This doesn't have to be the label. You could have put the label on the front and you could put something else in the middle. And then what I do is I usually just use my fingers to hold the card open while I'm doing this. Um, and it doesn't have to be centered. In this case, I want the, sorry, I'm going to stick my head away. I want the, the label to be between these little gingerbread pattern. Scallops. There we go. I knew gingerbread pattern was the wrong word. These little scallops, right? I want to try to label it in between there. <clears throat> so you're not seeing the whole strip. You're seeing part of the strip. But I like the way it looks. And I mean, if somebody's going to open it the whole way to read, I just, I like that it's centered. That's all. So there you go. We now have an easel card. Oh. And like I said, you can get elaborate and make um, I used it, I think I used a bigger piece of paper when I did it, but it was basically the same thing. I made a fold and another fold and then a slightly smaller one and a slightly smaller one. So I had three different folds. And as long as when you lay it down, you, you, you lay, at that time I made a custom envelope. 
but as long as when you lay it down and everything you've added to those folds fits within the base of the card, it will fit in your envelope. Now, just in case you're wondering, and I did not finish this one, but I just wanted to see the idea. This is the portrait style card. And you know how I like to open them this way. Uh, same thing, I just folded the front half. Now in this case, you can have a really shallow card. So your, your pieces, like instead of, oh, let me see, I can't get my hand going the right. So instead of being really like sharp, the part that sticks up, it'll be a little more laid back. So you want to make a chill card, there you go. But in the case of this one too, you have a lot more room to push back. So if you had a really big sentiment you wanted or your whatever your reveal is, you wanted it to be bigger, you could do that. Like I said, it doesn't have to be a sentiment. I could put pop that thing up on dimensionals, which I need to do anyways for the rest for my last card. So I'm gonna do it just to show you. I'm not gonna stick it to this card because I fussy cut those, those little uh, gingerbread snowflakes out and really don't feel like cutting another one. But you'll notice, so it sticks up a little bit, right? Here, I'll just poke it in the middle. So I have lots of room. You can stamp on the inside. It doesn't have to be pattern paper. But I mean, I could have this going here. And because I have nothing else <laughs> readily, um, I could have a little label going here. I could have this. Like I said, oh, this might even be the right size. Let's see. As I hold things, it built. Um, but I could do it this way, right? I could stick my calendar on here. Put a, put a big picture quote saying something like that there. And there's my other easel card. But the beauty of it is you can lay it flat, pop it in an envelope and mail it. So there you go, easel cards 101. Um, I would love it if people would make their own easel cards and post pictures and show me, especially if you get really elaborate, make a bunch of uh, different layers. And I think the one I did that had different mountains and I was trying to find a picture of it when I started, I think I ended up using two pieces of paper too. I think I started with the bigger 12 by 12, so I could make it a little bit longer. And I think I made the first one with a little bit of a, like a foot, and then I added the extra two on. And then yes, this is not the extent of what you wanna have decorated. You wanna always be attaching something, but again, just make sure that you're gonna pop it up and you're gonna lay it flat, that it all stays within the little confines. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed easel cards. I hope you'll post a picture of the easel cards you make. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day.